So right over here, we have the graph of y is equal to x squared, or at least part of the graph of y is equal to x squared. And the first thing I'd like to tackle is think about the average rate of change of y with respect to x over the interval from x equaling one to x equaling three. So let me write that down. We want to know the average rate of change of y with respect to x over the interval from x going from one to three. And it's a closed interval where x could be one and x could be equal to three. Well, we could do this even without looking at the graph. If I were to just make a table here, where if this is x and this is y is equal to x squared, when x is equal to one, y is equal to one squared, which is just one, you see that right over there. And when x is equal to three, y is equal to three squared, which is equal to nine. And so you can see when x is equal to three, y is equal to nine. And to figure out the average rate of change of y with respect to x, you say, okay, well, what's my change in x? Well, we can see very clearly that our change in x over this interval is equal to positive two. Well, what's our change in y over the same interval? Our change in y is equal to, when x went increased by two from one to three, y increases by eight, so it's gonna be a positive eight. So what is our average rate of change? Well, it's gonna be our change in y over our change in x, which is equal to eight over two, which is equal to four. So that would be our average rate of change. Over that interval, on average, Every time x increases by one, y is increasing by four. And how did we calculate that? We looked at our change in x. Let me draw that here. We looked at our change in x, and we looked at our change in y, which would be this right over here. And we calculated change in y over change of x for average rate of change. Now this might be looking fairly familiar to you because you're used to thinking about change in y over change in x as the slope of a line connecting two points. And that's indeed what we did calculate. If you were to draw a secant line between these two points, we essentially just calculated the slope of that secant line. And so the average rate of change between two points that is the same thing as the slope of the secant line. And by looking at the secant line in comparison to the curve over that interval, it hopefully gives you a visual intuition for what even average rate of change means. Because in the beginning part of the interval, you see that the secant line is actually increasing at a faster rate. But then as we get closer to three, it looks like our yellow curve is increasing at a faster rate than the secant line, and then they eventually catch up. And so that's why the slope of the secant line is the average rate of change. Is it the exact rate of change at every point? Absolutely not. The curve's rate of change is constantly changing. It's at a slower rate of change in the beginning part of this interval, and then it's actually increasing at a higher rate as we get closer and closer to three. So over the interval, their change in y over the change in x is exactly the same. Now one question you might be wondering is, why are you learning this in a calculus class? Couldn't you have learned this in an algebra class? The answer is yes. But what's going to be interesting, and is really one of the foundational ideas of calculus is, well, what happens as these points get closer and closer together? We found the average rate of change between one and three, or the slope of the secant line from one comma one to three comma nine. But what instead if you found the slope of the secant line between two comma four and three comma nine. So what if you found this slope? But what if you wanted to get even closer? Let's say you wanted to find the slope of the secant line between the point 2.5, 6.25, and three comma nine. And what if you just kept getting closer and closer and closer? Well then, the slopes of these secant lines are gonna get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line at x equals three. And if we can figure out the slope of the tangent line, 
Well, then we're in business because then we're not talking about average rate of change. We're going to be talking about instantaneous rate of change, which is one of the central ideas. That is the derivative, and we're going to get there soon. But it's really important to appreciate that average rate of change between two points is the same thing as the slope of the secant line. And as those points get closer and closer together, and as the, the secant line is connecting two closer and closer points together, as, they, as that distance between the points, between the x values of the points approach zero, very interesting things are going to happen.